I'm Steve Cassano, the State Senator from the 4th District, and I want to welcome you to another version of Focus on the 4th, where we bring in various individuals who live in the 4th Senate District, which is Manchester, Glastonbury, Bolton, and Andover, and we talk about local issues and uh, how they Im impact on uh, not only our region, but, uh, but on the state of Connecticut. Today we're uh, going to go into a totally different area that uh, most people just don't understand the significance of their importance. Uh, when I was elected, I went through a variety of uh, different types of jobs that existed in the region. I found that there were more than 100 active farms in the four towns. I was astounded to see that. And so I spent a great deal of time going out and, uh, and visiting a lot of the farms and, and uh, heard firsthand from uh, many of the farmers as to some of the issues. Uh, the governor has put in, uh, in many of his economic development bills, sections of money, five million, ten million, to be dedicated to farms as part of economic development, which has been quite exciting. And many of the farms have taken advantage of that. And two of those farms, uh, farmers are right here. So I want to introduce to my left, Tony Botticello from Manchester. Uh, uh, his farm has been there uh, for centuries probably, it seems. Uh, and Joe Dondero from Glastonbury, uh, two of the uh, uh, more prominent farms in, uh, within the communities. The life of farming. Uh, I grew up, my father was a fisherman, my grandfather a fisherman. And I remember one day talking to my grandfather, years, I was probably six or seven years old, talking about one of the differences that you know, I said was the toughest job in the world. And he said, no, farming's the toughest job in the world because the fish are always going to be there. Mm -hmm. We might go out in <laughs> bad weather to get the fish. He says, but the farms, the weather, the this, the that, you don't want to be a farmer, you're better, you're better off being a fisherman. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm experiencing that as a senator, and you guys surely are experiencing that as, <laughs> as farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, never have I seen such an impact of weather as I have seen on farming, particularly the last three years that I've served in the Senate, the types of things that you've gone through between the Halloween storm, the flooding, and so on. So, Tony, tell me... Uh, why don't you start a little of what the impact is. What has it done to your farm over these last three years and your whole business with these weather-related issues? It's made it hard to make a living. I can tell you that. It's every time you think you're getting ahead, something comes around and knocks you back. You know, the, the snowstorms caved into some greenhouses, and we had to pay to rebuild those. And the floods this spring, you know, we had some corn planted and a bunch of produce planted, and that all flooded. We lost it all. You know, and, and every time you think you're getting ahead, you just can't seem to do it. Joe, you've got the uh, you've got kind of the same situation. Yeah, it seems like uh, abnormal is the new normal for the weather. The uh, these last three years, with the it started with Irene with the hurricane, and then you know five six weeks later, you get a 20 inch snowstorm up in the hills of Glastonbury. There, end of October is ridiculous. I had catastrophic tree damage. You know, still recovering. Uh, from that, you know, um, then last year with the, you know, 40-inch blizzard, it was like something you see in Alaska, crushing greenhouses and just, yeah. uh, I don't know, Mother Nature's just got us in for, in for us lately. Yeah. <laughs> you've been, how long, how long have you had, you've got two farms in, Dun mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Glastonbury, yeah. uh, and you've expanded. Instead of just growing, I think you've had to, you've recognized that, uh, we got to try to do something else to cover for some of the losses and so on. So tell us about the history of your farm and, and, uh, and, and some of the alternatives that you've uh, included now. Uh, my great-grandparents started in uh, 1911, came over from Italy in uh, 1901, went to New York at a little grocery store, got a chance to come to Glastonbury, bought this piece of land, the original farm. And, uh, you know, it was pretty much... Um, wholesale and sell at the farm business um, up until you know my grandfather and his brother took over just last year uh, we bought the old uh, Sestero Malnati farm on top of Hebron Avenue and uh, outside of just growing produce we have a huge um, process line uh, pies pickles jams relishes all kinds of stuff like that my wife oversees all of that um, I mean, she makes everything run, you know, so. But uh, that's, that's a huge, huge help to us. You know, that's, that's one thing the weather can't stop. At least, you know, you're in there doing something, you know. So we try to make use of 
every piece of produce we grow. You know, we try to let absolutely nothing go to waste. If it's not sold fresh, it gets turned into something. You know, so make the most of your every dollar. Yeah. Tony T Manchester. I mean, kind uh, of known your dad for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, and he was there a lot longer before I even got here. Tell me about the, the Botticello Farms and, and, uh, and also the land you have in Glastonbury. Yeah. My dad started it in uh, the late 70s, 78, I would say. He was an electrician, and he had his own electrical company. So his family was always uh, farmers, and he loved doing it. And he started with a little picnic table out on the front lawn. was selling tomatoes from his garden. And then he built a little stand on the front lawn, and, and now it's, uh, it's about 400 acres. But the piece in Manchester is is about 12 acres and there's not a lot of land left in Manchester so we uh, we have some land down by the river in Glastonbury in the meadows which that's probably where we grow most of our produce and truck it back to the stand in Manchester you know but uh, same thing like you said where you have to be involved in a lot of different things you know you can't just count on the produce we do the greenhouses and the flowers and that's all right there in the property in Manchester and then you know even this time of year we'll sell sand and salt and you know, for parking lots and things like that. We plow snow, we do whatever we can do to, to make a dollar, you know, because it's not easy. Can't plant year round in New England. No, you can't do it, no. <laughs> no. no and we see, uh, well, you've just seen now in Florida, uh, we got a cold front that just went through and, uh, you know, the orange, we keep reading every year about the orange crop. Well, you guys experience this, not with oranges, but with your, with your own crops. Uh, you can't plan for that. No, every year you get a frost, it's always gonna, it's always gonna die, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. My father always says, you want to you talk about gambling, take all your money and put yeah. it in the ground. Because yeah. 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 that's what you do when you're a farmer, pretty yeah. much. You know, most of us in the Hartford area, uh, people go to work, they're out on the highway. We see them at 84, we see them at 91, starting at 5 o'clock in the morning. What's your day like? Uh, summer, my day is like 3 to 7.30. 3 in the morning to 7.30 at night. It's early in the morning, packing stuff for market for the stand. Uh, you know, we do spraying early in the morning, stuff like that, and then just getting the crew going. The guys start at, well, five or six, depending on the time of season, uh, temperature and stuff like that. What types of crops do you grow? We start off with uh, strawberries um, into raspberry, blueberry. We do all the berries, um, and then all the stone fruit, apples, pears, um, a lot of vegetables, a lot of tomatoes. Uh, we don't do too many fancy stuff vegetables we do all the mainstays tomatoes peppers i'd plant stuff like squash you know um that's about it you know, that's enough <laughs> that's enough <laughs> yeah. Yeah. tony you've got to go uh between glass and manchester how are you handling that and what's your day like uh we usually start picking corn you know during during vegetable season um probably around five and then go all day we haul it back and pack it and we sell to uh, Highland Park Markets and two shop rights, one in East Hartford, one in Manchester. And then we pack for uh, BJ's. And we, so it's yeah, probably about 5 in the morning until, like you said, 7 at night, 7.30 at night, and 7 days a week until, until you get a frost, you know. That shuts you down. But um, the greenhouse season is not quite as hectic. You know, you don't start quite so early. Yeah, it's a lot more Yeah, but user-friendly. Yeah, a little more user-friendly, <laughs> like you said. And, you can control that a little better too, you know, with the. And that's mostly flowers. You don't have to flowers. count on rain, you know. You can yeah, water right. it. Yeah. And you do most the greenhouse is mostly flowers. Bedding plants and yeah, Mother's yeah. Day baskets, and then we grow plants for your garden. You know, if you want to plant tomatoes and yeah. things like that, we we supply you with the tomato plants and squash and pretty much anything you can grow in in the state of Connecticut. This year, I saw at Highland Park you had some of the best corn I've seen all year in October. It seemed mm -hmm. like this was a long, good season for corn. It's well, you know, early we had those floods and we couldn't get into the ground to plant. It was so wet. So we planted things for later on in the season, which, you know, we didn't pick too much early, but we, it ran long. We were picking corn still in November. And uh, it was, the late corn was some of the best corn we've had all year. Yeah, yeah it was beautiful corn. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to take a break and come back uh, to the second segment in a few minutes.
Welcome back, Steve Cassano, a senator from the 4th District. Having a great conversation here with, uh, first of all, uh, Joe Dondero from Dondero Farms in Glastonbury, Tony Botticello in Manchester. Uh, in the first half of this program, we talked mostly about uh, the farm life and so on. Uh, let's get into some of the sticky issues that go along with farming. Trying to get help, good help. Uh, I know we've had programs where we've allowed uh, over the years uh, people to come in from other countries to work in the summertime and so on, and uh, uh, Congress has seen fit to uh, cut back on many of those uh, uh, allowed into the country, which uh, puts you in a position where you've got to hire people here who don't want to do farming. Uh, what's it doing to, you, to, your, to your business, Tony? Most of the guys that work for us now are, are uh, living here in Connecticut. They're they're real good workers and they live here, but you have to supply them housing and, and vehicles and all that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely one more hurdle, you know, another, another roadblock for farmers trying to get the help to get here, you know. People that, most people don't want to work 80, 90 hours a week, you know. Nobody here is going to do that. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but it's my farm, I have to, you know. You have to grow up into it to do it. Mm. Is that the, the case? Joe, well, it's a way of life. For us, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I've been to, again, uh, several of the farms, uh, same situation, provide the housing, provide transportation, and so on. Some of them had workers that have been there 10, 15 years, and they're having difficulty under the new rules getting in. So the farm is suffering. Uh, mm -hmm. Stuff's not getting picked. Stuff's not getting planted. What, what can we do to make this system better? Uh, let's talk. I'll give you one example that, I've, that I keep hearing, electricity. Uh, you all run storage sheds, basically. You've got to store the corn, you've got to store apples, uh, fruits, and so on. Uh, uh, you have refrigeration units you run in the coolers and all that. Uh, how much do you pay a month in, some, in these kinds of uh, situations? I, I'm hearing six, eight hundred dollars a month oh, just to keep apples cold. No, the height of the season. Well, with all our storages, the height of the season, <laughs> we're up it's over three thousand dollars a month three you know, in the summer. Yeah. And years ago, they used to have a special rate, like they did for municipalities, like municipalities do for water. They used to have a special rate for, um, for farmers. There used to be a lot of breaks for farmers that aren't around anymore. Yeah. Even, even going into the dump in Manchester, yeah. it used to be, okay, the farmers just let them in. And now I've got to go on the scale and weigh in and, and pay just commercial fees just like everybody else. Yeah. You know? So those, a lot of those benefits are, are gone. I don't know if they've been treated as, as uh, under the umbrella quote of economic development. Uh, Pratt & Whitney, uh, manufacturing, there are all kinds of uh, incentives, small businesses, and a lot of incentives, quote. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to the credit of the governor, he did put money in for farmers, uh, which yeah. we haven't seen before. Um, I, I, we need to pursue this whole issue of the electricity. Uh, because if that rate could get back, I know it would have a substantial impact on, on, on the farmers. Yeah. Uh, um, with the situation of uh, vegetables coming in from other parts of the world and so on, uh, are there things you don't grow because you know they're coming in? Because they're coming here? Because the, we know that they're going to be importing A, B, or C, or is it just that, that they'll import them at a time of year when you're not growing them? I mean, how does it generally work? Does it interfere, or is it just a different time? It seems to be if you can get it locally, most people are going to want to buy it locally, you know, and, and it's, it's better fresh. You know, when you buy it in the summer, there's nothing like yeah. fresh corn or fresh tomatoes yeah. or, you know, and then in the wintertime, they get it from down south or whatever, and it's maybe not as fresh. So yeah. I don't think that affects us as much. Yeah. I th just my own observation, uh, being at both of your places, uh, I see more people at farm stands buying fresh from the farms mm. than I think we've ever seen. I, uh, I think this locally grown and the, the kind of uh, uh, advertising and things that are going out, and I think some of the groups that are out there uh, promoting uh, it really has helped. Uh, can't keep up with the gladiolas over there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're not there at 10 o'clock in the morning, they're gone. They're gone, know? yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing the numbers of people that are, that are coming and starting to go and picking up a pie or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, I'll go up and figure out, I've got get a couple of beers of corn and I go back with two bags or something. Uh, yeah. Um, do, you, do you see that continuing? Yeah, well, even stores, like I said earlier, we sell to BJ's now and they got to be on board with the, the locally grown produce. You know, they yeah. can't, because people aren't going to buy produce there. Yeah. That's so, something you thought you'd never see. Yeah, I never I thought, thought I'd see A big place like that. that. Yeah, and they're buying. local because of the local demand. One of the reasons I wanted you in is we got these plant grants. Uh, 
in my district, I think I had 19 of them or something like that. Even four in Bolton, a smaller town like Bolton, which has a lot of farms. Um, how, how do you use those, Joe? I mean, what, what, what did they do for you? Uh, well, our tomato house went down in the blizzard last year. So <laughs> they, uh, we got the grant to uh, pay for that, you know, the, everything that was lost. And, uh, you know, fix all that stuff. So that was, you know, huge help, huge help. And so you rebuilt it? Um, or in the process of yeah, yeah process yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. what did you what, what, how did you get impacted with it how did it help you two years ago we lost two greenhouses that fell in and it cost about ten thousand dollars to rebuild one of those greenhouses and the same two greenhouses fell in again last year so you know we put all that money out of pocket to rebuild those greenhouses and like i said we're just treading water so yeah. this money is going to help us a lot yeah. Well, I saw that firsthand because uh, when I was up in the spring getting my seeds, uh, I was looking for boblanos, mm. and uh, that was part of the greenhouse that went, I guess, went and so down, you didn't yeah. have any. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, people, people are having those experiences by going and saying, well, uh, you know, it, it's not there. Uh, yeah. Where are we going in the future? A lot of farms and a lot of guys that farm, that's not their main source of income. There's a lot of part-time guys that yeah. they're just looking to make a buck on the side, you know. And those guys, they don't care what they get in the market for a price. You know, they'll sell it. They're happy to get anything. Yeah. You know, that, that's really true. Yeah. That's you know what I was saying. There's a big difference between the guys farming with money and yeah. the guys farming for money. Yeah, right. We're farming for <laughs> money. And those guys already got money. They get a state pension or, you know, maybe they had a, a job working mm -hmm. somewhere where they're collecting their pension. And, and they just do it on the side. And yeah. that... I don't think we'll ever get them on board with us, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think the key for us is to get more senators involved behind us so that they understand the impact of farming on the communities. I don't think they do. They just get out and buy the fresh vegetables and take it, take it yeah. for granted. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if we can uh, change things immediately. Obviously, uh, uh, Washington is a different case. Most of this comes from the Department of Agriculture. And in talking with uh, the senators out of Washington, they'll tell you, well, that's not what we passed. We will pass a rule or a regulation, but it's up to the departments as how they interpret it. And so you're sometimes stuck with a bureaucratic decision that uh, has nothing to do with what the legislative decision mm -hmm. was, and it's a killer. So, well, we're pretty much out of town. I hope people watching this uh, remember you have local farmers. Uh, uh, that's important. There's nothing better than fresh. Uh, I, I grow vegetables myself. There's nothing like going out and picking them. Uh, I still buy more than I than I plant. Believe me, I can't keep up with the weeds. What's so easy to go to your place. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks again for coming in and uh, have a great holiday season. And uh, I know you're already planted for next year. So uh, let's hope it's a it's a better weather year yeah, yeah. and a, a, a good year uh, a good disaster year for the pocketbook. Free. Yeah, disaster free. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks again for coming in. Right. Both Thanks for having us. Appreciate it.